Now, I'm sure by now many of you have seen the video that I uploaded last week where we reviewed the Titan transcript to see whether it's authentic or whether it's fake. So many of you have questioned us over this past week. Hey, is this thing fake or is it not fake? And some of you have commented to us that you have the exact proof that makes this fake. Many of you have seen this photograph that David Pogue, the reporter from CBS, uploaded last week to show us the codes that they would use from the sub and how they're very truncated. And a lot of them are just acronyms and stuff like like that, mostly because of the bandwidth allocation requirements. This text is converted from sound into text, so you have to be very terse with your wording. So many of you are using that as the reason why this is a fake. I tell you that you cannot use this as the reason to say that this is fake, because this doesn't prove it. And in fact, I showed you on my other video the other night, and I'll show you back here again, the BBC did a documentary on a dive down on the Titanic. And in the BBC documentary, they were showing what was on the screen there in the submarine and you could see it there and it was not a bunch of acronyms folks as you can see right here in the in the picture they were talking in almost complete sentences there when they told them to change the controller around you know rotate the controller 90 degrees so that you could steer properly because they had put the thrusters on backwards but this clearly shows that they do indeed talk in sentences and you can't just use the fact that David Pogue posted this photograph as your excuse that this is is fake. You know, I'm leaning a little bit more onto the fake side that I think it is fake. Um, but I can tell you this, whoever did this transcript, if it is fake, it's probably the best fake in history. Until David Pogue posted that photograph, nobody could tell either way. It was indeterminate. On the same token too, folks, you saw Snopes' article. I'll show you right here a little bit of it and then I'll put a link to it. So Snopes is one of the uh, fact-finding sites out there. They fact-check everything. So Snopes initially had mentioned my video here last week and Snopes initially flagged this as indeterminate until David Pogue contacted them yesterday and sent him his picture. He said that when he went down, they did speak mostly in very short little words and not really in sentences. Okay. The difference is, A, a year has gone by. Maybe things have changed. Maybe they've relaxed the way they talk. There's another reason that many of you give as to why you think this is fake. And it's, a, it's not really a very good reason. A lot of you are saying, well, if you think that they were descending too fast, why didn't the top side try to stop them from going fast, huh? Why didn't they tell them, Are you, hey, you're going too fast. That's what makes it fake. Well, that's not correct either. In fact, many people weren't paying attention because if you look right here on the video, and so now here at 9.15, it says you are at 75 minutes depth. Do you need to adjust velocity? And the sub reports back all under control at 29.60. No adjustments needed. We're enjoying the ride. You can see that the top side was asking, do you need to adjust the speed? Now, you got to remember, folks, who's in control here? Stockton Rush is. At some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed, don't get in your car, don't do anything. Yeah. At some point, you're going to take some risk, and it really is a risk reward question. I said, I think I can do this just as safely by breaking the rules. Okay, he's the number one in command. He's down on that sub, and nobody topside is going to tell him what to do. So you can see they did indeed ask him, do you need to change the rate of descent? So I don't know how many people had missed that and how they conjured this up as, as this is an excuse as to why this couldn't possibly be an authentic transcription, because they did indeed ask, do you need to adjust the descent? And Rush replied back, no. So they assume he must know what he's doing. And the other thing I wonder too is, do you think anybody on that boat filled with a bunch of interns how experienced these people are and who among them are engineers. Do you think they know what the descent rate is and whether that's safe or not? Think I'll give this little tug a lucky little check for safety violation. So you know what a number of us have noticed too, including many of you with experience in carbon fiber technology have also mentioned in our comments. Take a look at this here. When they were putting those titanium rings onto the carbon fiber compression chamber cylinder there, did you notice that as the rings are lowered onto the compression chamber and it's sliding around the adhesive, did you notice that no adhesive came oozing out? And you would expect to have maybe some oozing out that they could wipe off as evidence that you had adequate coverage of adhesive all the way around. How do you know there weren't little micro voids in there too? So each time we analyze these videos that OceanGate provided to us during the construction of the Titan sub, it just opens up more and more questions. Every time uh, we get input from different engineers from different disciplines, especially this very esoteric discipline of the proper way to build carbon fiber. 
across the board they're saying that carbon fiber should have been woven at angles and you change the direction with each pass they were just floored that they were using this hoop spun method that just does parallel wraps over parallel wraps and many of them were surprised that these guys weren't wearing gloves either another question we get from time to time too is what's inside that back pointy cone at the end of the titan submersible so here i was able to get a screenshot here off david pogue's trip down to the titanic and you can see here it's all exposed and there's all of the equipment and everything so it's mostly the electronics and the life support system why did the navy take so long to notify people that they heard this implosion sound. They could have saved a lot of trouble because do you remember? They were searching us an area the size of Connecticut, which is completely nonsensical to me because they knew what the last coordinates were of where the Titan was and that's where they should have started. It wasn't until Pelagius showed up with their boat that they were able to f find it. And remember, their submersible, I think they called it the Odysseus 6, it dropped down to the Titanic in 90 minutes and they said it didn't take them long afterwards before they found the debris. Probably because they went to the last known position. Either that or maybe by that point the Navy had given them the coordinates. So the Navy doesn't want to give out a whole lot because that's a top secret system. They don't want to tip anybody's hat. They don't want to let us know how well they can triangulate everything there, right? And they don't want to let us know what the sound sounds like either that they heard. So all of these TikTok idiots that were putting out the, the recording of the sound, that was a complete scam, complete fake. I just don't know why people do stupid things like that. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Didn't even sound real. Everybody knows that the Navy did not and will not release those audio files. Another common question that we got from you folks this week is, why didn't they have a line going down to the sub? Why did it just go down on its own? Why not just drop it down under the control of a line? That's okay to do too, but that opens up another Pandora's box of problems for you because those lines can get snagged around shipwrecks and that can create even more danger for you. So those are the kind of pros and cons you need to weigh in on those. But they did use the line to go down and get it, which leads us to another question that many of you asked was, how were they able to retrieve those heavy parts off of the bottom of the ocean? Pelagic Research Services is the company that went out on the boat with their uh, Odysseus 6K ROV. And this is it right here on the screen. You can see it hanging off the boat. And then if you notice there, it has a line that goes right here and it comes all the way over here to this big reel. I don't know how much spooling space they've got on there, but it's certainly enough to get down to the Titanic. That's for sure. So this is how they managed to recover all of the wreckage of the Titan sub. So these are these grappling arms they've got here, and apparently they're pretty powerful, and they were able to grab some of these things, lift them up, and just haul them up. All right, so here's the spec sheet for the ROV. Now, I don't know if this means this is how much it can lift or not. It says through frame lift. Not really sure what that terminology means, but it says here it looks like 2,000 pounds with the load releases. And with the lifting fixture, 4,000 pounds. There's nothing else here that indicates any type of load carrying capability. But obviously, it was able to come up with the parts without any problem. So here's another Fire Marshal Bill moment for you folks. A Quality Magazine just did this story the other day about the lack of NDT on the Titan submersible stuns many in the industry. Now, NDT means non-destructive testing. It is a way to test the structural integrity of your materials, like for example, on airplane wings, and they do these ultrasonic testing. And so right here, they interviewed Greg Weaver, the president of Weaver NDT, and he says, I was stunned to learn the Titan submersible had supposedly not undergone any NDD testing. I mean, that's something they could have done easily and they wouldn't have to worry about causing any damage to the Titan sub. It's inconceivable that a critical submersible such as the Titan was not subject to the most extensive non-destructive tests available. That ultrasonic testing and radiography inspections that could have potentially helped avoid the Titan's fate. It says these methods are used to ensure that the submersible is structurally sound and that it is free of any relevant defects. And this material makes it even a greater reason for extensive testing. By the way, the US Navy uses both ultrasonic testing and the RT here for their subs, and this should have been the minimum on the Titan to provide the utmost assurance that no critical discontinuities were present. 
And remember, keep your questions coming because we'll answer as many as we can over the coming days. And thank you so much for joining us, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next one.